snake bites, shark attacks, airplane crashes, catching a contagious disease on the subway. People are more afraid of things like this, things are, that are statistically less likely to happen to them than they are of the things that are more likely to kill them. One of the tenets of risk communication science is that people's perceptions of the likelihood of self-harm are not motivated by data. Jamming safety percentages at people who are afraid of flying and will not convince them that their plane won't be the one to crash. Telling people that the data that smoking, drinking, or consuming sugary drinks can cause cancer or heart disease, what we call non-communicable diseases, is just not convincing enough. Moreover, these lifestyle issues are considered part of the good life that we all aspire to, and this is no accident. Corporate interests gleefully market and promote this perception, while policymakers feeling insufficient concern and public pressure to impose policies that regulate them, let these corporate actors off the hook. For virtually every driver of NCDs, there is a profit-making industry culprit. Tobacco, sugar, alcohol, sodium, trans fat, the air we breathe causes illnesses that lurk in our bloodstreams, our lungs, our hearts, our livers, causing illness, not necessarily immediately, but over time. Tobacco companies are notoriously the bad actors, but we need to start thinking about those other dudes as the bad guys as well. Have you looked at how much salt there is in your child's breakfast cereal? How much sugar there is in yogurt? Why we've let trans fats lie in our blood supply for so long? These industries are, sheeps in wool, are sheep in wool, wool, wolves' clothing, promising us a better life with slogans such as, open a new happiness in every sip, great taste for great fun, Power is in your hands, feel it. Brilliant marketing creates an airstream, a current of aspirations that glide along, seducing consumers and policymakers in the wake. But the price we are paying is way too high, whereas the price industries are paying is too low. It's easier to blame the victim and hold them accountable, isn't it? The lung cancer victim who shouldn't have smoked, the diabetic that ate too much junk food, the alcoholic who should have gone to AA, the asthmatic whose causes are genetic. This plays right into the strategies of those industries that evade regulation and policy checks on their behavior. So how do we get people to care enough about the increasing epidemic of these commercially determined non-communicable diseases such that policymakers are forced to protect our health? How can we get people to be more upset and frightened at the things that really are harming them? How many of you still believe red wine is good for your health? Or that OxyContin is an effective, non-addictive pain killer? How do we get people to connect the dots? To see how marketing and junk science are used to confuse us and to keep us from doing the things that protect our health? How do we make sure that people know that what they have smoked, eaten, swallowed, injected, breathed in are making us sick? And how can we move people to see this and move through changing their behavior to also call for policy change, to push for regulation and restrictions on tobacco companies, soda and junk food conglomerates, the alcohol, opioid, fossil fuel industries, and so on. Emotional and graphic storytelling can show the harms these products cause, call out the need for people to change their behavior, and just as importantly, display how these sinister industries must change their behavior too. I'm going to show you three clips, ads that we have run on multiple media platforms in several countries that try to accomplish both of these goals. The first is the story of a woman called Sunita. She, lives in, she lived in India. She was married to a truck driver and had two young children. She chewed gutka, 
a form of chewing tobacco that was deliberately marketed as a form of breath freshener. So let me show you that. The second depicts a South African woman who drank sugary drinks throughout her day, a social norm engineered by the beverage industry. No wonder South Africa is the most obese and diabetic country in sub-Saharan Africa. And the last spot I'm going to show you is a familiar story of drinking and driving and the consequences of alcohol, a product we in public health haven't nearly paid enough attention to. So the importance of storytelling, these types of stories that are told in ads or the kinds of stories that you're hearing on this stage today, is journalism 101. But we often forget to tell stories, show the human impact, instead of relying on data to get the message across. Whether traditional, digital, or social, media can greatly amplify our stories. We must seek to break people's hearts, to cause empathy, to change their minds, and to create more salience for the issues that we all care about. At Vital Strategies, we aim to strengthen public health systems globally, and this includes putting industries under a microscope and putting people first. This requires policy, and it requires advocacy, and advocacy requires stories. Thank you. <laughs>